Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Happy Healthy Moms. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and for those of you that are a new face to my channel, welcome. I am super excited that you guys are here. I have an awesome topic to talk to you guys about today. Something that I'm currently working on myself, so it's just interesting and fun to kind of dive more into this and really talk to you guys about it. So today, we are talking about how to be happy. <sighs> right? So it's something that even now I, I struggle with, not on a daily basis, but a lot of times I'll just be like, oh my gosh, I just I don't feel happy. Is there something wrong with me? Am I depressed? Do I have postpartum depression? Like what is going on? Because life is hard, especially with kids and work and a house and a husband. It is not easy. So it is normal for us to just not have days where we feel happy and how are we supposed to as a mom show you know complete joy and happiness and be that Pinterest PTA mom for our kids it's it's difficult so especially when you have days where you're just like oh my god I just want to crawl back under the covers and not even deal with today so let's talk about it these are my five tips for just being happier on a daily basis. And it's something that I have incorporated into my life recently and I really have found that it's helped me. Um, we all can use some more tips on how to be happy. So it's something that I'm gonna continue to talk about. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna have a ton of more videos coming at you guys on just, you know, life, happiness, because we all need to find ways to have joy in our life and to just, you know, have that smile on our face. So number one that I have, it took me a long time to realize this, but number one is to stop trying to be happy. I think that's a huge problem. I know it's something I struggle with, but we keep having these milestones in our life. I'm going to be happy if I get married, I'm going to be happy if I have another baby. I'm going to be happy if I'm a size two. And you know what? You're going to probably get there and you're still not going to be happy. You're not going to have that feeling because whenever we set this extreme goal or anything where this is what's going to make us happy, we get there and then we're like, okay, now what? I'm here. I'm feeling different because things like that, it can yeah bring joy to your life, but for you to just tell yourself, as soon as I lose 20 pounds, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be happy. That's gonna be it. And one I'm gonna wake up 20 pounds later and I'm just gonna be happy. And you know what? It doesn't work like that. So I think my personal opinion is that we all need to stop trying and focusing so hard on trying to be happy and enjoy what leads us to that happiness, if that makes sense. So say you want to lose weight and you think if you are three jean sizes smaller or 20 pounds lighter, that's going to make you happy. If you really take a step back, once you get to that level, what is going to make you happy is the process, is going through the motions, is really, you know, getting in the gym and working on nutrition and the small baby steps over the course of weeks and months. The process you have to find joy in that because that is what's going to make you happy. It's not the end all goal. You really need to start taking a step back and enjoying the process because that's honestly how I feel we find happiness. It's not about the end result or the end goal because you're going to achieve it and you know, you're going to get where you want to be if you work hard enough and you might find that you're just you're not happy because it's not all about that. It's not all about things or money or, you know, I have this or I have that. If I have this, I'm going to be happy. It's not about that. It's about finding joy and happiness in the process of doing things. If you can find small pieces of, of joy in each day or happiness in each thing that you're doing to work to your goal, that's what's going to really lead you to live a happier life. You know, I've found from personal experience that I will even small things like a weekend getaway. I'm going to just tell myself like, oh my gosh, that weekend getaway. I'm going to be so happy when I come home because that's going to be what I needed. That's going to make me happy. And I get home and I'm always disappointed. I've 
I've lived so much of my life disappointed because I give myself such high expectations that when I do this, it's going to make me so happy. And then it doesn't. And I realized that I need to stop setting those standards to think that me doing this is going to make me happy and realize that the process is what brings me joy so that we can get away. Me being there and me doing things there is what's bringing me joy and happiness, not the very end result. So I think just take a step back, stop trying to focus so much on that, doing that, reaching that is going to make me happy, but realizing sometimes it's the process and the baby steps and finding joy in that. So hopefully that makes sense. It's something that's really helped me. Um, so step number two is set boundaries. Set boundaries for yourself, for other people, and it can be, you know, boundaries with certain people in your life, certain family members. Are you one of those people that always say yes to everything and then, you know, you're really pissed off or unhappy having to follow through with that because you said yes or you say yes because you feel bad but you really don't want to? Set boundaries. Don't say yes to things that you really don't want to do or... You know, it's one thing to have an obligation with work or this or that, but if it's a Saturday and people have asked you to do something and you say yes, but you really don't want to because it's been a long week, it's maybe the one night you have home with your husband and your kids, you don't have to say yes. Set boundaries for yourself so you're not always so overstretched and you are always like, oh my gosh, set boundaries. So you can go and watch your show on Netflix instead of folding clothes if you feel like you've just reached your breaking point. So make a breaking point, set a boundary, draw a line and be like, I've reached that line today. So I'm, I can't do anymore. I'm done. The dish is in the sink and the clothes are going to wait until tomorrow because I've already reached my maximum capacity for the day. And that's okay. And we have to start telling ourselves that that's okay. So set boundaries, draw a line. Okay, number three is self-care. We are very busy. We have children, families, jobs, a house, so many responsibilities. Sometimes we forget that we're taking care of so many people and so many things. We don't take care of ourselves. So we need to practice self-care more. I promise if you do even half an hour a week sometimes can really just reset you and make you just... Smile, honestly. It can it can honestly just put you in such a better mood. And by self-care, I even mean something as small as the kids are asleep and you're going to go take a really long shower or a long bath and put a face mask on or um, paint your nails or do something that you enjoy doing for yourself. Take care of yourself. Take care of your body. You know, we need that time for us. So... It really can just, I swear, put you in a better mood. The other night, it was such a crazy day between my toddler and the baby. My husband got home late. It was like 8 o'clock. And I told him, I was like, okay, I need an hour. And I really wanted to go for a walk. And I was like, you know what? Here's the baby. The toddler has her jammies on. She's all set to go. I'm not here. If there's an emergency, obviously come get me. But if not, then pretend I'm not here. And I took an hour. I went for a little walk. I took a really long shower. I did a face mask. I like tweezed my eyebrows, anything to just make me feel like a woman again. And I was in such a good mood. Like I came downstairs on my couch at like 10 o'clock and my husband was like, whatever you need to do, do it because I would rather take the kids for an hour and have you be like this then have you be completely miserable huffing and puffing all night because like you haven't had any time for yourself. So self-care, go get that pedicure, go get that manicure once a month even. Just take time for yourself, practice self-care, take care of yourself so then you can take care of other people and then you're, you're going to be much happier and then that's going to allow you to take care of people better anyway. All right, number four. Make goals, even if it's small goals. Sometimes we all need a purpose and we're so busy. We have so many things going on and we're so just like pissed off that we never have time. And just for whatever reason, you might not be happy. Make small goals. And that small goal can be making the bed in the morning. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You know, I know that there's different levels of 
being unhappy. There might be people that honestly suffer from depression and, you know, there's other things geared towards those type of people or disorders. But for the everyday to day operations of just feeling overwhelmed and stressed and borderline, like something's wrong with me, you know, sometimes little goals really make a difference because you can be so overwhelmed throughout the course of the day that you feel like you've done absolutely nothing. And then you're just pissed at yourself because you're like, I've done, like, my husband's going to get home and think that I've done absolutely nothing today when I know that I haven't even sat down. So even sometimes making one goal, my goal is going to be folding one load of laundry. My goal is going to be making dinner. My goal is going to be getting my child down for a nap. Make small goals. And then when you accomplish them, you honestly feel better and it can just make your day a lot better and make you feel like you've accomplished something and it can be bigger goals too you can say you know what my goal is going to eat healthy for two weeks or you know not order takeout for two weeks any small goal that you want to do whether it's daily monthly you know short term long term set small goals because then you feel like you have more of a, a purpose in your own life Um, not just in everyone else's because I think a lot of times as moms we get lost in the fact that we are so important to everyone else we forget that we're important to ourselves too so it's really important to make small goals for yourself Um, and small goals are are better in my opinion because they're easier to reach and sometimes small goals add up to a bigger goal so you know just take little baby steps and sometimes my goal is just taking a shower and that's okay. And I've had days where I haven't reached that goal and that's okay too. But if I'm like, you know what, today I'm going to take a shower and get dressed. And then that happens at the end of the night, I'm like, I accomplished what I set out to do as small as that is. So set little goals for yourself. And last but not least, I think this is a big one that we all need to do more. I don't care who you are, is live in the moment. Like I was kind of talking about kind of brings us back to that first goal of just not trying so hard to find something that makes us happy you know live in the moment because we don't do that enough we're so worried about everyone else and we have so many things going on we get overwhelmed and we get unhappy that not everything's done that we want to get done and there's 10,000 things on our plate and we don't live in the day-to-day and we don't find happiness in the day to day. You know, there's days I get overwhelmed because things are crazy. The house is a mess. I haven't done anything I've wanted to do. And I spend the entire day pissed off and that's no way to be. My kids are only going to be young in this stage for right now. So I really need to, and you really need to take a step back and be like, instead of stressing that there's dishes in the sink and the floor hasn't been vacuumed in four days. I'm going to sit here and do colors with my three-year-old because that's where memories are made and that's going to make her happy. And you know what? Your kids don't care if you haven't showered or the floor hasn't hasn't been vacuumed for two weeks. I promise you, but they're going to care that you sat with them for 15 minutes. So live in the moment, you know, Live in the moment with your relationships. Don't always think like, oh, I wish they would do this. I wish they would do that. I wish they'd be like this. They are who they are now and you like them or love them for, you know, who they are at one point. So we all need to be in the moment more and just bring it back to that step one, finding joy in the everyday. And I really think that if you can just do even just the first one, find joy in the day, in the day-to-day things, that it's really going to help you. So hopefully you guys can incorporate at least one of these into your day-to-day living because I know that they have helped me and us as moms, we all need some tips on how to just relax a little more and, you know, be a little more happy. So, like I said, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you guys more tips and tricks on just day-to-day living. Thank you so much again for tuning in to me. 
to this video. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the day and we'll talk soon. Bye.